Now, the Chancellor is going to rewrite the government's debt and taxation rules in the budget, unleashing a borrowing spree of up to £50 billion. However, investors have warned interest rates will remain high, with families expected to be hit with even higher mortgages. And there are, amidst all of this, uh, more concerns about the Prime Minister may break his promise not to raise taxes on working people. Well, that's because he's now told us who he thinks working people are, mm. and those people who don't own assets or shares. He also said, actually, it's working people, the people who need a cheque at the end of the week, so sort of relying on that income, but can't write a cheque if they need to which seems to rule out... It rules out a lot of people. A lot of people. Doesn't it? Well, speaking to Chopper's political podcast, former Conservative Chancellor Lord Lamont slammed the Prime Minister's use of the term. I dislike this phrase, working people. Yes. Not just because of its ambiguity, but I think it's deliberately designed to imply working class, which I think is an out-of-date idea, and it's appealing to old-fashioned labour mythology. Mm. And I, I, I think it's a very unpleasant term to talk about working people. Why is a pensioner not a working person? Yeah. They've worked all their life. It's ridiculous. Well, let's talk to former Chief of Staff to Nadim Zahawi, James Price. Morning, James. Morning. Uh, working people, it is being redefined. I mean, you know, the, the old like, line, uh, how do you know a politician is lying, their lips are moving, has never felt more true with some of this. I mean, this idea that if you work really hard and you earn more than six figures, you're not a working person, that's another definition that Labour have given in recent days. And, you know, that might sound like an awful lot of money, £100,000 a year to, to some people. That's about $150,000 a year less than a bloke running a large petrol station will earn in Texas these days, right? Mm. To put into context how much richer we could and should be if we had the same kind of policies, same kind of economy as, as some American states. Or actually, frankly, any American state now, because even Mississippi, the poorest state in America, is richer than we are in the UK. And we're not going to be fixing that, fixing people getting wealthier, which means more money for schools, for hospitals, for people to just to, to, to live on and enjoy with the kinds of uh, accountancy, uh, let's call it jiggery pokery, let's not call it lies, that Labour are, are going on some of this. Mm. You can't just suddenly, uh, with a, the stroke of a pen, change the fundamentals of what the British economy looks like. Mm. You can't just suddenly say, oh, actually, all this debt that students are uh, uh, oh, for, for example, so the student loan book, lots and lots of money in there. Rachel Roos is going to redefine that money that the students owe to the government as actually that's an asset. Because I can call that in one day, that's an asset instead. Therefore, I can borrow loads that's more that money. Most people don't pay it back, do they? Well, in, indeed, indeed. And, you know, so all this kind of um, jiggery-pokery around here, and, and that's just on the accountancy rules itself, let alone the definition of working people. And I think the Prime Minister has said that if you own shares, you don't count as a working person, even mm -hmm. if you work. Do, do, do you guys, either of you or anybody at home, have a pension? Oh, well, except right? well, yeah. Pensions, what do they have in them? They have shares in them. So if anybody at home has got a pension, sorry, you're not a working person anymore, your taxes are going to go up under Keir Starmer. I mean, it's mm. absolutely extraordinary, and I don't think the market is going to buy it one bit. Well, talking about the market, there's a lot of nervousness around this, especially this debt fiddle, as it's been described in mm -hmm. the Telegraph today. So this is Rachel Reeve, Reeves rewriting Britain's debt rules to uh, unleash this borrowing spree of up to... £50 billion. Pounds. So, nervousness from the markets. They're watching very, very closely. Reports in the Telegraph today that they're not over the mini-budget under List Trust. So, there's so much nervousness. I mean, it's the last thing that, that's needed. Yeah, absolutely right. I, I think that the, the Chancellor uh, has come in with, to office saying, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be responsible, transparent, all these things. It turns out she plagiarised the book that she wrote. It turns out in some revelations yesterday that she has not been exactly accurate about her business career, describing herself as an economist uh, working in a bank, and it turns out that that isn't actually true either. She seems to spend more time, I think, changing her hair colour several times. Oh, come on, in she's anticipation done it once. Of she's this. done it once. Uh? She's changed it back again, uh, right? But let's, let's keep it on we... the night of stuff like that. Doesn't <laughs> matter. Doesn't matter. Well, it, it wouldn't matter if, if it was the case that this budget was going to be a big success and was going to be very helpful and the market was all, was all tickety-boo about all this, but it's clearly not. I think the fundamentals of the British economy are pretty weak. We have to realise that we're not a very wealthy country anymore. <clears throat> right? when, you know, a lot of people will come on this programme and say rightly that we're not building as much or making as much anymore. That's been disincentivised. All right, hold on. Yeah, all right. Well, let's pick you up on that then, because I mean, yeah. the whole the whole point of this 50... It sounds very... It's very confusing to those of us who aren't e economists and aren't in government. But this changing of the rules to allow to borrowing of 50 billion is specifically and can only be used for capital investment. Mm -hmm. Now, that means, capital expenditure, that means 
building projects. You said, well, we're not building enough. Well, actually, we're going to start building if we borrow this money. The, the main reason we've not been building enough in terms of infrastructure, we're talking, you know, you and I get here on, on road or rail, but economists use infrastructure, as Margaret Thatcher once said. The reason we've not been building enough of that or enough houses or enough exciting new kind of technological things is mostly actually because the government's been getting in the way of it and preventing these things from getting built. And when the government does try and do something, look at something like HS2. It's taken decades. We haven't built any, almost any of it yet. It's gone massively over over budget. Yeah. And so I just don't trust that government is very good at doing these things. What it should be doing, if it wants to have these things be created, is getting out of the way. It's not the US government that created this amazing rocket ship that Elon Musk used that he managed to catch out of midair using these giant robot arms. When you've got an economy as exciting and dynamic as the American one that can make that kind of stuff, then you could go and borrow a load more money. But because we haven't been changing any of the fundamentals and we make it so difficult for people to perform business tasks here in the country, it's no surprise that we're projected to lose more entrepreneurs, more millionaires than any other country in the world over the next five years, where taxes are as high as they are and things like crime are getting worse as well, which also uh, makes people not want to come here and invest money in the UK. And none of that is going to change with the kind of accountancy uh, messing around that the Chancellor is talking about here. Can I ask about Chogham? Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting that's taking place in Samoa at the moment. Uh, Sir Keir Starmer said this week he wants to discuss current challenges. He wants to talk with Commonwealth countries about things like climate change rather than slavery reparations. But some reports that countries are set to defy him today I, I, and ask for slavery reparations. What do you make of this? I think this is absolutely astonishing. I mean, it gives a complete lie to this nonsense from a few weeks ago that the United Kingdom unilaterally has decided to give up some of its territory. Uh, these Chagos Islands in the South Indian Ocean that are of massive strategic importance. This is British territory. And David Lammy and, and Keir Starmer have given this up. And they've given it up largely because of what they call soft power. Well, if soft power were so useful and so important, surely at this Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, people would be saying, oh, thank you so much. Your wonderful soft power is doing so much great work. We're not going to ask for anything else. Instead, of course, it's shown Britain as being as weak as it is under this government, I'm afraid, and asking for slavery reparations. Well, where are my reparations for the fact that, you know, Welsh and, and Anglo-Saxon people have been put down by the Normans from the French or from the, the Romans, right? We, we know the, the Roman invasion of the United Kingdom or, or England or whatever you want to call it, thousand years ago, or two, what was it, let's say, two thousand years ago almost, was uh, was terrible and they, lots of people got enslaved and moved around there. Are we getting reparations from Georgia Maloney in Italy? No, of course not. Are we going to get any thanks for the fact that it was the Royal Navy that spent 50 years and lost tens of thousands of men stopping the slave trade? Are these people asking for reparations from other West African countries who were also complicit in the slave trade? I mean, this stuff is absolute nonsense. And if Keir Starmer is messing around with this and not just saying, this is never going to happen, this is nonsense, we're a proper grown-up serious country that does more good in the world than almost anywhere else, then he's not a leader that we need. OK. Uh, look, for now, thank you very much indeed. We'll catch up with you a little bit later on, James.